Robert Williams is coming back, we think, on Friday night. That's exciting. We're going to talk about that. And a report says the Celtics are not very active on the trade market right now. We'll discuss that too right now on a Friday Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team, step back. We gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corrales above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, gapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And I'm here for you every day with a free, fresh podcast that drops directly to your device if you are a subscriber. So that means you should be a subscriber. That way, you get shows right away. And on YouTube, you can subscribe there, ring the bell, get notified right away when I drop a video. Early drops when I can on the YouTube page and a nice growing Celtics community. Now that Twitter is imploding. So go check that out on uh, the Locked On Celtics YouTube page. Thank you for making the show your first listen every day. I'm John Corrales. Professional, former professional sport. I remember I remember the intro. I'm totally fine with this. Uh, I'm a former professional basketball player now covering the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. Clearly my brain has not begun working since yesterday's show. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. We'll see Friday night here if Robert Williams starts for the Boston Celtics. He is officially listed as questionable, which is the way things generally work for a guy coming all the way back. You list them as questionable just in case something happens uh, during the day, but that's the indication. Adrian Wojnarowski reporting that. Rob is planning to come back Friday night. That's basically going to be the first couple of segments. Later on, we'll talk about that report from Jake Fisher that the uh, Celtics are not being active on the trade market. Let's bring in Tom Westerholm. My guy, Tom Westerholm. How are you feeling, Tom? Feeling good. Feeling like I uh, like I messed up your intro. So, uh, um, well, mission accomplished over here. I got you say, out here saying that you're still a professional basketball player. Yeah. Which is, uh, yeah, which is news. As- Far? Breaking news. Yeah, yeah. I would have I would have thought I would have heard that from Jake Fisher, not from you. But you know, yeah, are. yeah. And announce uh, well, ten days are coming up. Oh, and, right. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, there are a lot of teams out there that are trying to lose, and there's no better way for an NBA team to lose than to sign me and put me on the court. I, I mean, I, I'm trying to say, man, like I'd be so much cheaper. I'd just be like, like, you're spending all this money on yeah. I don't know, Isaiah Stewart. You're not why Stewart's not why? winning any he might actually I, help you. He's kind of good. I can yeah, lose no. you games. I can definitely go out there and lose you games. I mean, you want to lose. You put me out there. You are going to lose and lose hard. I, I am You're a one to to Victor Wembanyama and you I mean, right? So, yeah. I mean, come on. Indiana Pacers, you're going it's going a little too well for you. I mean, the San Antonio Spurs, you don't need any help, but hey, hey, teams that are out there that are trying to tank and trying to figure out, oh, geez, how can we do this? I got you. I can still Scoot. podcast after the games. It's fine. Scoot your way to Henderson by signing me and Corrales. That's that's right. It's very no. simple. No. Um, I may not survive if that actually happens. <laughs> oh, no. I may die on the floor. Oh, yeah. Uh, may, oh, yeah. I, may, I mean, it's entirely possible. Either that or I'd simultaneously blow up both my ACLs. It's, hey. it's not pretty now. And then they play four on five. And like they, they lose you're organs. definitely losing on that. Actually, I, honestly, man, uh, NBA players playing four on five against other NBA players would be better than uh, either of us. Yeah, uh, like the, the 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 at least like four on five, you could like figure out like a zone yeah. or something. Like either Who's of us would be a punchy old guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right, Robert Williams coming back. Yes, uh, that's that's um, Tom. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I'm gonna say this is big news. It is. It's 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 kind of funny because it's it's the only big news that you can really like aside from like, you know, games or injuries or anything like that. It's really the only big news 
that the Celtics could track throughout the season because we're going to get to the trade stuff later. But like this team's not really trying to mix up a lot of things, right? Like no. you're not like there's not going to be any like I mean, obviously, there's not going to be any blockbusters. And then you look like down the line, it's like, you know, that Robert Williams coming back was the big drama of the, uh, the the first, at least the first half of the season. Right. I think it might be the only real drama, again, barring, you know, any any major news, um, you know, in, in an unfortunate department. But like, hey, this is great. Like, you know, we, we talked about this yesterday. Rob Williams, engaging young man. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's get him back on the court. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah, I think there's so many ways that he can help. And we've talked about a lot of those things, but I'm, I'm really curious to see, first of all, how do they use him? What do they do? So let's assume that he comes back on Friday. They, you don't list them as questionable without the intent of bringing him back on Friday. You are, like I said before, just trying to, you, you gotta, you gotta cover yourself and not say he's available. And then all of a sudden he wakes up and he's like, oh, I'm a little sore from that last workout. And you go, Oh God, no, no, he's out. Because then that begs the question, like, I mean, even if he sits out, people will be, oh, what, 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 what was it that held him out? But anyway, the the ramp up is gonna be super, super slow. So there's this excitement, yeah, Rob's coming back, but also he's gonna be on a serious minutes restriction. So I wouldn't expect him. I don't even know if I'd expect him to play. 20 minutes. I would expect him to play one stint in the first quarter and one stint in the second quarter. And that'll be it. That that's my expectation. No reporting, no nothing. I'm just saying you get out there, maybe you start him, and your reason you start him is you get him warmed up. You go through the lamp lines, you get, get that blood flowing. You start him. When you sit him, you sit him. He goes into the back, maybe even, they go through the, the battery of tests. They, they go through everything. How are you feeling? Then later on, you get them onto the bike. You get them into the halftime warmups. You start them again in the second half. And and maybe maybe you can say, oh, we can handle a little bit more, and, and you can do that. Or you say, that's it, two seven-minute stints, 15 minutes or so, and let's revisit this on Sunday. Yeah, 100%. Because the other thing, you know, like the Celtics are also going to probably have Al Horford back. So like right. they right. they'll be good. Like this is not a situation where you have to throw Rob into the fire. And honestly, you know, you bring him back for the Orlando game. That there's not even there, you know, presumably the temptation isn't even even going to be there because like Orlando's been playing pretty well. I'm not saying Orlando's going to be a pushover, but just like the stakes of this game are much lower than the stakes yeah. of I mean the stakes of the Warriors game. I mean Tatum did point out like this is a one thing, but like you know what I mean. The yeah, stakes yeah, of the Warriors right. game are much higher than the stakes of the Orlando Magic right. on January on on December 16th. So, um yeah, no, like I think this is I mean for one thing we talked about this like this was the perfect game to bring him back for partly that reason, um, you know, this one or the Sunday game. And yeah, like there's no pressure. You, you, you play him a little bit and then you just go back to these lineups that you've been using that have been lighting the NBA on fire. Like, yeah, he, I, like I, I kind of, Rob is in a weird situation that I want to get into in a minute here. But the good news is for him in this like ramp up. He is like the pressure is not high. Like he can take all the time he needs to get acclimated and get all set. And, you know, we've talked about the wind that's going to like he's going to have to get his wind back in this mm -hmm. first game. I mean, all these things, it's it's going to be a process. But the the pressure is very low. Luke Cornett is very competent coming off the bench like Al Horford is incredibly competent as the team's starting center. Grant Williams has shown a little bit here and there like they can get by on little stints for Rob Williams, you know. 15, 20 minutes at the start, let him get back into it. So it's a nice, it's, it's a nice cushy way for, to, to welcome Rob Williams back. Yeah. I, I, Al, Al Horford coming back is, is, is a good point. And Al Horford being rested, he didn't play on that whole swing and you know, Oh man, he's good when he's rested. <laughs> he's good when he's rested. Uh, I'm assuming that he's getting his sleep. Even is the baby born yet? I assume the baby is born yet, but yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. Oh, I didn't see that. I didn't see. It. I haven't followed it. Yep. So, okay. So baby number five is here. Great. I still think he's getting his sleep. I don't think anybody's waking him up to do any feedings or anything like that. So, but hey, whatever. Maybe he is. But I'm just assuming that he's going to get his full rest and he'll be perfectly fine on Friday 
uh, for for this game. So that that's going to be great. They're going to need that, the fresh legs. And maybe you lean into your bench a little bit more. Maybe you get more Pritchard. Maybe you get more guys. Maybe you 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 lean on Vonley if you need to or or whatever. But I, I do think this is a good opportunity to slowly ease him in. And you think, start him, play him those minutes, day off, Sunday afternoon game. You can kind of dial it back if you need to. You can ramp it up a little bit more if you need to. You can Whatever you do with Rob, it doesn't even matter. It just matters that you have uh, the, the steady process and that he's responding well. And if he's responding well, then you can go to 20 minutes and then 25 minutes and then to 30 minutes. Great. Congratulations. Uh, I'll let you make your next point on Robert Williams when we come back. First, today's show is sponsored by the NHTSA. We know how it goes. You've been hanging out with some friends, putting back a few drinks. A few becomes a few too many. And as the evening comes to an end, people start to head out. And you think about calling for a ride. And then you think, nah, I live nearby. I can make it home okay. It's no big deal. What are the odds you're going to get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You lose your job. You can tow your car. Or you can kill someone. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think it's okay to drive after a few drinks, think again, play it safe, plan ahead, and get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's life forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. Today's show is also brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy and fun. I've had people come up to me at the garden talking about how much they love prize picks because they heard it on this podcast. And why do you love prize picks? Well, first of all, it's you against the, the projections. They set the over under, you pick the over or the under, and that's it. If you get it, you win. You're not playing against X, you're not playing against a bunch of other people. You, it's also super easy. You pick two to six players, and if you win, you can get up to 25 times your money on any entry. Prize Picks offers these projections on any sport that you watch. When I say any, I mean any. All the major pro sports. You can go PGA. You can go college sports. You can go World Cup. You can go uh, into esports. <laughs> I'm telling you, disc, golf, cricket. It's all there. And entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's super, super easy. Safe and fast withdrawals because that is also very important. And currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. So download the Prize Picks app, app, or go to PrizePicks.com. Sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can get a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Locked On. If you deposit 100, you get 100. If you deposit 50, Prize Picks gives you 50. Don't forget to enter the promo code Locked On at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Hey, thanks for making Lockdown Celtics your first listen every day. How about making Lockdown Sports today your second listen? If you want to be the expert around the water cooler, 22 minutes of Lockdown Sports today will make that happen for you. Check it out. Local experts, unlike anything you're going to hear anywhere else, find it wherever you found this podcast and on YouTube. Tom, you said you had more to get into with Robert Williams. Well, yes. Uh, I mean, I, I think the, the thing that makes me – a little bit concerned for Rob's return, right? Ooh, concern. This man, it's not so much, a, it's not a concern initially, right? Because I think, like like we said, this is all going to be cushy as he ramps up and all of this. There is a lot of pressure <laughs> riding on Robert Williams here. And it's not just because, you know, the Celtics are trying to win a championship, all this stuff, right? It's not just the normal pressure that's on guys who are, like, on, on a contending team. He also now has to, like, the Celtics have been so good to start this season, right? They've been like they 21 and five. They, they went on this big road trip. Now they're, you know, they're, they're, their record, their best record in the NBA, historically great offense, a rising defense, all this stuff. And the interesting thing about what they have to do now is they have to reintegrate a guy who does fit. Like he fits very nicely. And we saw that last year. We, we've talked about how great a fit he is with the Celtics core, with 
Smart and Jalen and Jason. But like now that they've that they've kind of gotten this rhythm together and they've got all these guys on paper, he's a perfect fit. Like on paper, this should all work. But they are going to be trying to integrate a guy who is going to demand like not demand like verbally, but just like his game demands a lot of minutes. He's a good player. Mm -hmm. And like they now have to try to work that guy back into this equation that they've created that that really has worked for them so far. So I'm it's not it's not like a major concern, but it is something I'm interested to watch. Like, I think there's there's this kind of this idea that Rob Williams coming back is going to automate like it's just going to automatically be good. The Celtics are going to be perfect. Like everything's going to work. I'm curious to see how it goes. Like the, you know, the, this is going to look a lot different, I think, because Rob yeah. is, is a, is a major player. This is not integrating some dude off the bench. Like this is your starting center and arguably the third best player on your team. And he's yeah. coming back into a situation where your team has been really, really good. That's obviously most like almost a hundred percent a good thing, but I, I'm curious. I, I got, you know you. what I'm, you know what I'm saying? I got I'm not, you. I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to concern. I can troll feel here. you like couching the, like, I get it. There's there, you are integrating somebody else, but, yeah. but, um, I think that there, there's a couple of things here that make this a little bit easier. And, and let me, let me start by saying, yeah, it's going to be a little bit rocky at first because Robert Williams hasn't played NBA basketball yet this season. And the last time he played good NBA basketball was in what April before the injury since the injury, he was kind of like, you know, not hundred percent himself. Like that's, I think that was March, but yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So that is still, it's been a little while for him. And so it's going to take some time. It's going to take him time to get his, his legs. Those legs are going to be wobbly. Um, he's going to, he's going to go up for, and Ooh, did I just, I'm looking at my video. I'm like, I feel like I just became like an, a ghost, an apparition. Oh, I'm, I'm disappearing. Oh, you know what happened? I traveled back in time and I didn't get my parents back together. So I'm starting to disappear. Um, so I got to hop the, uh, my DeLorean. This is my back to the future moment. I'm starting to uh, disappear. Yeah. Does this make you the ghost of Corrales past, present or future? I can't tell. Um, it's yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm Corral. I'm more Corrales McFly here. Okay, anyway, right, right. the point the point I was making before the weird video thing started happening, um, is that yeah, Rob Rob is there's going to be a time where Rob goes up for an alley oop, right, or or goes up to dunk something, and he doesn't look like he gets as high, and people are going to be like, oh God, no, no, he doesn't. What's wrong with his knee? And it's going to be like, no, the, he just doesn't have his legs yet. Just let him let his let his legs get back underneath him. Let's let's give it time. Yeah, the concern is not his bounce. The concern is that five years from now we hope he has cartilage in his knee. <laughs> right. And I and I think that, you know, that sure, that's a that's a concern. But also at the same time, he's not a high usage guy. It's not like you're reintegrating Jalen Brown, right? Sure. Because now Jalen needs a lot of touches. Jalen needs to get it's not like you're you're bringing Jason Tatum back or Marcus Smart or even Derek White. Like those guys get touches, they do a lot. They they are asked to do it. Rob's touches are like you don't run plays for Rob to shoot jumpers. Right. He just does things in the flow. And the flow is the type of game that he likes to play. The offense that they like to run is the type of game that he thrives in. So just I think naturally there's going to be, oh, yeah, I'm setting picks and rolling and doing this and short roll and, and kick outs and, and finding the guy in the – like, yeah, baby. Oh, you want me in the high post and, and picking guys apart from the high post? That's exactly what I do. That's what I do, very Peyton Pritchard style. But it's it it's going to be – Peyton Pritchard, Rob Williams, two peas in a pod, we often say. say I mean, can, can you even tell them apart? <laughs> I think uh, – it's going to be slow. I'm not, I'm not as gravely concerned as you are, Tom, as you just expressed how gravely I, I expressed concerned you are. Uh, uh, listen, man, this is why, I, this is why I've brought it up so many times on the podcast yeah, before this. I know, yeah, I know, yeah. but uh, yeah, no, it is going to take, it is going to take some time. It is going to be a, a slower process. I, I, I really want to get people's expectations to the right spot. It's going to take 
time. Time for that's, him. To get... Sorry, I sorry, I interrupted you. That, but that's more what I'm trying to do, right? Like you're trying to get people's expectations to the yeah, right. right spot here, because like, that's right. and and I think and I think one of the one of the areas where like if you want to get you know your expectations to the right spot, again, that historic offense, maybe it continues to just kind of write itself, and it has nothing to do with Rob, and he does help the offense, but like you know, it's they were right. they were at an unbelievable level, but then the defense rises up. You know, you're you're number two in offense. You're number you're number you know four in defense. Championship level team, like you're, no problems. You know, you're, like it's you're basically changing this team's center of gravity. Yeah, it's spinning yeah. along, and you're changing yeah. its center of gravity, and it's going to start to wobble a little bit. Yeah. And you just got to recenter it, and it'll start spinning along again. You hope. And yeah. there's, we can sit there and say with confidence, of course it will, but you can't say with a hundred percent certainty because there is you have to leave that little window exactly. of well we don't know for sure because he hasn't been on this team yes i can say i know for sure i feel pretty good for sure <laughs> but you don't know for sure that it's going to be and and to your point i think the there the level of anticipation has been so so high just look at what happened when we thought he was coming back a week ago there was everybody was like you know, the office gift. Oh my God, it's happening. It's happening. You know? So it was, yeah. And I think people need to calm themselves, relax a little bit and understand the process. So you're not sitting there going like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed by this. Just know that the, the Rob that we're expecting, the Rob that we hope is going to be the old Rob is is still – Robert Williams, the human person, a living flesh, is coming back potentially on Friday. Robert Williams, the phenomenon, Time Lord, is not coming back yet. He's not on the floor yet. And it might take him until January or maybe even longer to come back. So Robert Williams is coming back. Time Lord, we'll see when Time Lord is back. That's, I think, where we're landing. So. Yep, I think that's right. Okay, so we'll come back. We'll talk about the report that the Celtics are not active on the trade market right now. Hey, it's December 15th as we record this show. Everybody's eligible to be traded for the most part. And now it's like, oh, what? They're not doing anything? Hmm. We'll see what they end up doing. But first, today's show is brought to you by betonline.net, your number one source for sports betting information, sports betting, stats, news, analysis. It's all there at betonline.net. Podcasts, yeah, sports betting podcasts, there. Sports podcasts, there at betonline.net. Obviously, you're going to get the latest odds and trends for all the pro sports, for amateur leagues. You want pro football, college football, college bowl season here. This is prime bowl season, so you're going to want to be looking at those odds. Basketball. Uh, World Cup, we're looking at the, the finals coming up, so uh, don't know exactly when because I don't follow it as closely as you do, but you can check it out at betonline.net as well. Head on over to the website today. You can use your mobile device if you'd like to. Bet Online is where the game starts. Please gamble responsibly. December 15th is bringing out all the trade talk and uh, the, the, the just we're starting into our annoying season of Oh, God, here come the rumors. Oh, God, here comes everybody trying to get their, their point of view out, getting their, their agenda out, agents, front offices. It's starting to happen now. It's my, it's my personal least favorite time of the year. But trade season is everybody else's favorite time of the year. Now, the Celtics, though, according to Jake Fisher of Yahoo Sports, are not, not active currently. Tom, are you surprised at all that the Celtics are not active currently on the trade market? Like, I know, I know we're trying to like, like, like fill content time here, right? Now, <laughs> like, sorry, <laughs> like, <laughs> like what, like what were they? Tom Westerholm just just blew me out of the water. <laughs> just said, John, you know what? Screw you and your <laughs> podcast. And the topic that's happening right now, yeah, I'm, 
we're just gonna blow it up. We're gonna like, you know what? I know we're just trying to fill time here. No, John, shut the f up. We're gone. Bye. Yeah. No. Look. What, what, what are we doing? Why are Thanks we, why for are watching. We... Thanks for listening. <laughs> no, for real though. Like, what would this this team could not like? They don't need anything. <laughs> like, they no. don't, you know what I mean? Like, even you go down the list and it's like, okay, like if they lose a game, there's not a single call for like nobody. Nobody can like really. Even the complaints are kind of funny. They lose a game and the complaints are like, Joe Mazzula didn't call a timeout. It's like, yeah, dog. That's what he's been doing all year. It's yeah, been yeah, working yeah. most of the time. Like, yeah, right. it might not work sometimes, but it does work most of the time. So it's like, w- what are you going to call for? When they I, lose? Side, note, side note, can I just say, side yeah. note on the timeout thing, I loved all the people who were like, see, Steve Kerr calls timeouts and they won the game. Like his team isn't a 500 team. I was just going to say. Let's In look fact, at the- today below, they're a game below 500. I was going to say, I, I, yeah, I thought, they, I thought they had just they gone below. Yeah. below 500. <laughs> so people are like, see, Steve Kerr calls a timeout, and they won. He was outcoached. And it's like, um, yeah, they've lost twice as much as Boston. So I don't know. If the know, Celtics were 14 and 15, Joe, like the, the calls, like, I mean, Joe Mazzulla would be out already. Like, let, like, let, I mean, I was going to say, like, people would be mad at Joe Mazzulla. No, literally, if the Celtics were 14 and 15, Joe Mazzulla would be gone. Like, he would not yeah, maybe, yeah. be the coach anymore. They would have found somebody else. So, like, yeah, I, I mean, look, anyway, that's a side topic. Side, side note. Yes. The, the, but I just, the Celtics don't need a, a guard. They've got a lot of guards. So many that Peyton Pritchard doesn't play. Right. They don't really need any forwards. Like, they're good. They're all set. Like they, you know, Sam Hauser comes off the bench and like you know hits his hits his little threes. <laughs> like the uh, you know Tatum and Tatum and Jalen obviously play the Lions share the minutes. They don't really need a backup center. Like Luke Cornett can hold it down. They've got all these guys. Grant Williams is kind of that tweener too. Like like and, and then you know you got Robin out. Like you're good. Right. There's there's right. nothing. Your big trade is getting anything. Rob back. Rob is yeah. the big acquisition. Rob. That's the what act- I was trying to hint at before. Is that that yeah. is the only like. Woj slash slash Shams report that you kind of expect to see this season is Rob Williams coming back aside from like two way contract type stuff. Like there's mm-hmm. nothing there's there's nothing to do, really. Like it's yeah, you did it, Brad. You built your team. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there's <laughs> there's um, it, it's just people want more. People want yeah. more. They say, hey, look, I get it. This is a great team, but but. Uh, we didn't have Al for the road trip. We didn't have Rob for the road trip. And if that happens again, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then, if both your starting centers are out, yeah, right. I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah, true. Wouldn't man. it be great to have uh, <laughs> Nick Vucevic as a third string guy? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Miles Turner is your third string guy. Like, yeah, he, he's not gonna want to do that, <laughs> right? He's he's you don't just it's not 2K. First of all, those guys take too much money. And let me just set the expectation there. Vooch, Miles Turner, these guys who make like, you know, what was Miles Turner make? Like 18 or something like that? Something like that, yeah. It's like big, like in the mid, mid to high teens or above, too expensive. You can't get those guys without giving up rotation pieces. So keep that in mind. But even if you did, and you gotta say, you don't want to mess the chemistry on this team. Everybody loves what they're doing here on this team. So it's not 2K. You can't just line up all these awesome players. Like, you can't just trade for LeBron, let's say, theoretically. Like, yo, let's have him be, like, the fourth string guy. Like, no. It's not going to happen that way. However, they do have tools, and at some point, players are going to be available. I feel like this is – I don't know if you watched the, uh, the, 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 and the Netflix version of Arrested Development where yeah. – Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where Tobias and Lindsay are buying the house and they go from, we just want a little house. And they just start adding, well, you're going to have a guest house and you might as well have like a guest house for the guest house just to have it, just to have it. it. The the whole scene is just to have it. And next thing you know, they buy like this big mansion ahead of the housing bubble. That's what people want for the Celtics. Look, you don't know. You you just want to have another all-star point guard just to have it. And (laughs) It's not, it's just not that easy. But like I said, they have, they have a couple of exceptions that they could easily use. Wancho Hernan Gomez, $6.9 million traded player exception. 
Dennis Schroeder, five point, almost five point nine million dollar trade player exception. You do have Danilo Gallinari, who makes just about six and a half million, and Peyton Pritchard that you can combine to get to what's that nine, just about nine million plus when you add the percentage that you can go over. You can get like a ten, eleven million dollar player sure. for those guys. Those are options that the Celtics have. December 15th, with the Celtics as the best record in the league, not exactly the time for the Celtics to be active. No. Right? Right. Let Correct. them sniff around. Let things sniff around. Let things kind of – let other teams start to – their, their futures start to materialize because there are also teams that are better than expected. And we don't know what direction these teams are going to go. What are – the Indiana Pacers is going to do their 15 and 14. Where are they going to be in a month, month and a half? What are the Heat going to be in a month and a half? What are the, um, I don't know, Washington Wizards? Just go down the line. What are the Utah Jazz going to be in a month? And a half? Let that stuff happen. Those teams are still kind of too good to be talking about trading players away. And the players are too valuable right yeah. now. So I don't think December 15th, as much as that became the, first window that opens i don't think that's where the celtics become active trade deadline maybe because things change buyout market maybe but now this is the least surprising news to me and we pulled all the time tom suck on that we did it no i mean i know i mean it, it it's you know like you mentioned the chemistry right and it's like the thing is like if you go out and get a 10 million dollar guy like that guy's going to, that guy's going to want to play. And it's like, you know, you're talking about having like, well, we might as well have a guest house. Malcolm Brogdon is a guest house with a guest yeah. house, with a guest house, with a guest yeah, yeah, house. Yeah. You already off did your that. Bench. Yeah. You already did that. You already have that. It's this guy point. should not be coming off the bench. Like, right. Your team is already stacked. You know, you, you trade Danilo Gallinari and Peyton Pritchard. And it's like, if you bring in a rotation player, that guy's going to be in the exact same position as Peyton Pritchard a little too good to not be getting any minutes. Right. Like, you know, this, like you said, this is just not the time. And the other thing too, is like, we have not seen any holes in the Celtics roster yet. Like, like, right. and, and kind of tying in the Robert Williams thing. Let's say Rob comes in and something does just feel a little bit off and you want to make a move because Rob Williams is a really important part of your future. At that point, then you can do it. Like once you've seen what this looks like with Rob, you'll have a better sense of like what, is going on with your team, um, you know, like of, of what your actual team needs might be, um, whether you actually need to make a deal. You got two months still. Like the trade deadline yeah. is not yet. You still got time. You can go get that done. So, yeah, yeah it's just right. Uh, the priority is getting Rob back. Yep. Just not a pressing issue right now. Yep. Yep. The, by, by the time the trade deadline comes around, you have a better idea of, oh, God, this isn't going to work. Right. And then, then you can start to say, okay, how, how are we going to make this work? But for now, this is the priority is 100% what we talked about in the first two segments. Get yeah. Rob back, figure all that out, figure out what he can be long-term. Is his knee good or is his leg going to fall off mid-game? Like that's – so, and then you right. go from there. Then right. you go and, from there. And then, and then maybe you do look for a backup center, but you never know. Like so – If you have to, then the guys – Derek Favors is not getting snapped up no. right now. Be Sorry, okay. people. Like, and he he's still not on a team. And right. he's going to join a team other than the Celtics. People are going to be like, oh, I knew it. I knew they were going to miss the chance. Like, dude, he's sitting. He's just been sitting at home this yeah. whole time. He's not a difference maker. You think 30 NBA teams are going to let a, a difference maker sit at home? No. So... It's we got to recalibrate those expectations, but yeah, it's you're right. We 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 figure it out in February. Yep, for between sure. Between now and then, between now and then, things are good. So, like this podcast is good, Tom. Another good we one, it. man. Jeez. We did it. Let's keep it's rolling good. along with these killer podcasts. I mean, just... the the underscore boys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Locked oh, underscore good. God. Everyone just pulled a Marcus Smart and left to go throw up. As they should. <laughs> As they should. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate you. Uh, we can have some fun on the play. It's a Friday. We just we did it. We made it to the end of the week. We did it. 
Uh, I will actually, I'll do a podcast post, uh, post Celtics magic win or lose. I expect them to win. I expect it to be sloppy. First game back from a long, first game back from a long road trip and reinter. In, why can't I say reintegrating? Reintegrating Robert Williams can make for a, a disjointed mess, sloppy game. Don't expect pretty things, pretty things. It's going to be kind of gross, but as long as they win, and as long as Rob looks okay, so I'll do a bonus podcast after the game, if nothing else, to talk about how Rob looked. So that's going to be coming up. It's a six-podcast week here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. So make sure you're subscribed to get that podcast directly to your device. Ring the bell on YouTube so you can get notified when the video drops. Comment. Look, we all know Elon Musk is flushing Twitter down the toilet. So... Forget Twitter. Hop on the Lockdown Celtics YouTube page. We got a community tab. We got comments under the video. It's actually a pretty good comment section. It's not gross yet. So it's it's a good place for all the Celtics fans to hang out. So check it out there. Comment. Interact with everybody. It's a good little community. Check it out. Uh, If you're part of that community, I would love it if you shared the podcast. Tell your friends. Tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Your team every day.